Eastleigh Dreamers, welcome to my third ever English and Friends. And today I am joined by Korean Billy. Billy, how are you doing, mate? Hello. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you so much for joining us. Do you want to tell everyone, before we get started, a little bit about yourself? Right. So my online name is Korean Billy, but my real name is Song J Kong because I am from Korea. So basically, I'm native Korean, but now I'm living in the UK because I moved here as a huge fan of British culture. And yeah, being in the UK, I'm just like trying to experience uh, British culture as a Korean at the moment. And at the same time, I make lots of online content which covers British culture, English language in general, and specifically British accents as well. Fantastic. And we've done a couple of videos together before. And what I love is that you sort of see Britain uh, with different eyes, like you coming, come, coming at it from a different perspective, which I think is right. really fascinating and uh, one that my learners are going to absolutely love. So, Billy, we start every English and Friends uh, with five questions. Um, okay. The first one is, what's your favourite English word or phrase? Oh, English word or phrase. Hmm... Maybe. Mm, it sounds a bit silly, but I like the word gibberish. <laughs> that is a great Be word. Yeah, because it really sounds gibberish. Gibber, gibber, gibberish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which kind of means nonsense, right? Yeah. Oh, that's a great word. I love it. Mm. Gibberish. You're talking absolute gibberish. Mm. Um, I've heard many people say that to me before. Okay, uh, this is one that I feel like I, I have asked you before, but what's your favourite... British English accent. Oh, British English accent. I would say uh, the Liverpool accent, which is called the Scouse accent. Uh, yeah. Can yeah. you do a little bit of Scouse for us? So when you're speaking Scouse, they say K sound in a very distinctive way, which is like H sound. So people say like, like, did you have some chicken, my friend? And in Scouse, it would be like, did you have some Czechan lad? <laughs> like that way. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Yeah, things like look would become like look, look. Look, yeah, look. And cook, I'm cooking, I'm cooking. Cooking, cooking, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so good. Um, uh, Halima was on last week and that was exactly her choice as well with Scouse. And um, mm. it's so distinct. It's so unique as an accent, right. isn't it? Um, fantastic. And I know you spent a lot of time in Liverpool. So, um, mm. yeah, I'm not surprised by that choice, Billy. Um, mm. Okay, what's your favourite place in the UK? Oh, wow. Uh, of course, I love Liverpool, but I also like, hmm, I would say uh, Bristol would be my, uh, would be my favorite city these days. Of course, you know, Liverpool is my, I love Liverpool as well, but Bristol is quite a great mix of, you know, peaceful waterfront area and the city center is quite youthful and it's quite arty and exciting at the same time. So there are so many things to enjoy within one city. So fantastic. I quite like Liverpool, these like Bristol these days. Yeah, fantastic choice. Mm. Uh, what's your favorite British food? Oh, favorite British food. It's really hard to choose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will say, are British desserts also considered British food? Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, then like maybe, I think I mentioned that before, like when I was chatting to you, but I like apple crumbles. Yes. So much. Yeah. yeah. Because I don't, I can't really have it back in Korea, but in the UK, I can really have the authentic apple crumble, which is really tasty. And like each shop has its own different recipes and different styles. So I like just like sampling and enjoying different kinds of apple crumbles Fantastic. in the UK. Mm. There's a great place in Borough Market. Uh, and oh. I've forgotten the name of it. Like the Humble Crumble, I think it's called. Yeah. And they just specialize in, in, in crumbles. Yeah, I passed by there, but like the queue was so long. Yes. So I couldn't really wait for that. Yeah. So I, I should definitely try it next time. Yeah. And if any of you guys are in London, go check it out in Borough Market. Um, mm. Yeah, it's a fantastic place. Definitely. Okay, last question. Uh, mm. What's one tip that you have for anyone coming to the UK? Maybe like uh, getting the getting the mindset of embracing so many kinds of cultures i would say yeah because in the uk 
it's called like a melting pot of different cultures. So like you can definitely meet and enjoy so many kinds of cultures, including British culture, at the same time. So if you are ready to embrace and enjoy all those different cultures, I think you can enjoy the UK to the fullest. So like having that mindset would really help to enjoy the UK a lot. Yeah, I love that tip. That's a fantastic、mm. tip, and you're right. Like a melting pot is exactly how I describe、yeah. London and. Um, lots of other big cities in in the UK and、um, mm-hmm. yeah, fantastic. Okay, I love that, Billy.、Um, mm-hmm. Okay, we got some questions. You guys, you Eat Sleep Dream has sent some questions in for Billy and I to answer,、um, and they were fantastic. So let's start off with Earl Grey in Seoul、mm-hmm. um, on Instagram. Asked Billy, what motivated you to improve your pronunciation to that level? So the level that you're at is obviously、wow. amazing. Yeah,、mm-hmm. what motivated you, and how did、I、you do it? I think the very first motivation was、uh, when I first watched British films when I was very young. So when I was a, I think when I was a, a、uh, high school student, like when I was like seventeen,、uh, there was still Harry Potter series in the cinema going on, and I just be I just became such a fan of Harry Potter series. As well as other British films as well, so those kind of like you know, they're just it was just the power of culture. So that British culture influenced me a lot, and that definitely fascinated me and made me want to visit the UK. So because I was like so eager to visit the UK in Korea, I was even a small city called Busan, and. As a student, I thought、uh, the first step t- to visit the UK was to、uh, learn British English, learn their own language. So then I started to learn more about the English language, which was being used in the UK. So that's how I started to learn British English, particularly. Before that, I was speaking in American accent, which was totally different. And then, because I was really into British Britain, I started to learn it. And because, like, also the the film characters are so fascinating and so charming, and the way they talked, so I even like felt like I wanted to be like them as well. So that's how I kind of like started to learn, you know, the British English and the British accent particularly. And all the film characters were. My role models and all the film characters were my British English teachers, basically. So the way you know I improved my British accent as was also just like you know mimicking them, trying to just absorb their accents, and it was just like a you know a newborn baby. The babies tried to just mimic their parents, and they just tried to absorb everything around them. And it was just like I was also kind of like a baby when it comes to the British accent as well. I just tried to like imitate and mimic how British people acted in the films and TV shows, and it was even like a you know acting lessons as well because it involved like facial expressions and gestures, which I never use in Korea as well. So yeah, those are all those like uh. You know, verbal communication, non-verbal communication. Those things were just like put all together when it comes to like learning them. And I try to just focus on just everything and just like try to immerse myself into that, into everything about the British way of you know communication as well. In the end, so that really helps me to at least like sound like a and act like a British person. So. It took such a long time, but yeah, I could manage to, you know, speak in the you know decent British accent after a long time. Yeah, you've touched on so many interesting things there. So I think that first idea of the accent role model, kind、mm. of choosing someone who you admire, whose accent you really like, their pronunciation, and、exactly. so studying them, like listening to them over and over again. I think that's、mm. fascinating,、um, and I think that kind of immersion. Idea、mm. of just absorbing as much 
as you can. And we'll touch right. on that emotion in a second. Oh yeah, the, the concept of almost acting like a, a baby yeah. learning a first language, right? You're just listening. You are just taking it all in. Before you even try to attempt it yourself, you are right. listening and paying attention. And that's exactly how we acquire our first language, isn't mm-hmm. it? By just listening for a couple of years and, and taking it all mm. in. So doing that in in this case as your second language. Right. Um, and then, yeah, I, I want to sort of follow up with that idea of immersion there. So how did you immerse yourself in British English if you weren't in Britain? What, what things did you watch or listen to or study Mm. how did you do it so basically i would say i just uh i took advantage of every single material i could just get access to when it comes to british english and british culture so uh when i was a student there wasn't even netflix so it was quite hard to like stream british tv shows so i struggled to like find british tv shows but there were some like online platforms I could watch British films and TV shows as well, and like I could just like rent DVDs as well. So I just tried to uh, watch lots of like videos in which like there are there were British people and talking in British accents as well. So video was very helpful and at the same time uh, because like radio was big at the same time i tried to listen to lots of like podcasts as well particularly like there was bbc learning english and they were making loads of like audio content including podcasts as well so i could yeah i made full use of them as well listening to them and also textbooks as well you know i because like to be fluent in English, you just like have to learn the grammar as well. You can't get away from grammar, you know, to you know become fluent in the English language in general. So I also like try to learn grammar. Yeah. So I also use like pronunciation textbooks as well. And what else did I do? Yeah. So I basically I used just all the materials book audio video uh as well so all those like learning materials helped me all together and also what was important for me was like to you know keep myself entertained as well because like if you lose interest you know it gets a bit tricky and harder to you know keep studying it keep learning it so i just try to like keep myself entertained with different media and you know in that way that could kind of keep my motivation to learn the British accent and British English as well so all those things yeah were just being used at the time fantastic fantastic Mm. um okay let's get on to the next question um Mm -hmm. stan underscore n is it true that the British won't sit next to a stranger if they can avoid it like on a bus on a train mm. uh, or when they're looking for a park bench have you found that to be the case Billy I think so yeah because like as an Asian as a Korean uh, I think Asians particularly uh, Asian people are quite you know well known for being a bit shy and introverted so I also thought like because like British people are Westerners I thought British people would be also very, very outgoing, too friendly to strangers, even though I don't want to talk to them, and very just open-minded. So I thought like British people were would just like talk to anyone next to them. But like I've realized being in the UK, I've realized that like uh Britain and British people like are uh, compared to other European people, British people are rather reserved and introverted in some way so some people even say the uk is japan of europe oh because like japanese okay. people are quite shy and british people are a bit shy at first but like once they get close they just open up everything and become very crazy even so i think it's because of like a british i realized that british people also really hate 
bothering other people as well. Uh -huh. That's kind of their etiquette and their mindset. They don't really want to. They really hate interrupting other people. So I think that kind of like、uh, made their attitude of like not really sitting next to strangers and talking to strangers unless they really have to. And even though they really have to, they really have to talk to them. They also start with like, "I'm sorry to bother you. I'm sorry to interrupt," and then move on. So yeah, yeah, I, that was an interesting point.、Mm. I, I think you're exactly right. I was <clears throat> I was on a train yesterday, and it was quite quite busy. And there were some people who'd like put their bag on the chair next to them, right?、Mm. And I noticed that instead of asking, you know, people would get on, and instead of asking that person, "Oh, can you move your bag so I can sit down?" People just would leave it. They'd just be like, "Oh, no worries. I'll, I'll just stand up then," because exactly that they don't want to bother that person, even though that person has, you know, like taken up two seats instead of one. Everyone was kind of like, "Oh, I don't want to bother that person," and it's it's that same sense of yeah, I just don't want to make a fuss. I don't want to. Um, yeah, annoy someone or, or yeah, make a big scene. So we just kind of suffer in silence, as it were. Another question related to British culture:、um, Why is British food? Oh, sorry. Why isn't British food tasty? <laughs> you don't have a signature dish like the rest of the world. Please don't say pie.、Um, and then they say, I mean, you raided the world for spices. It seems only natural to ask. Now I think that is a great question, Billy. You're very kind about British food、um, in general.、Um, obviously, there's a reputation that British food it's not the greatest, and I'll fully admit that it's not the greatest. There are amazing cuisines out there. So not not British food, but food I have in the UK is. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not basically British food. <laughs> in a very polite way of saying it. I mean, in Korea,、uh, we just couldn't get access to other kinds of dishes and food from different countries back in the day. So we had to just like, you know, create our own stuff in Korea. Whereas the UK had like so much access to different kinds of food all over the world. So I think that kind of affected, yeah, as well. That's an、mm. interesting thought. Korean food, it seems to me, in the last sort of ten years, has really exploded across the world yeah, in terms、definitely. of popularity.、Mm. Um, and there was a time when like Japanese food was really popular. Like sushi was such a trendy thing in the UK, but now I think it's time for Korean food. Hopefully, so there are lots of Korean restaurants popping up. And on the top of that, like in the UK, you can just enjoy, you know, all those different、uh, dishes from all over the world. So one day you can enjoy Indian food, next day Lebanese food, next day Greek food, next day Ethiopian food, Italian, Spanish as well. So all those like dishes are、uh, being served in the UK are absolutely amazing because mostly like. I think the main reason why it's so good is because actual locals move to the UK and open their own restaurants. So Italian restaurants are run by Italian people, like Lebanese restaurants are actually run by Lebanese people. So I think that's why the average quality is so good in the UK. You know, as I mentioned, it's a melting pot. So when it comes to the food, it's so so good. But so like because like. And people are so just happy with all those different kinds of dishes from different countries. I don't think like people kind of complain about British food anymore because they have so many alternatives. So I've never seen like in the UK, living in the UK, I don't really see people living in the UK complain about the food in general. But yeah, British food kind of lacks a bit of. Creativity, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and the presentation or like visuals are not the best, for sure. Yeah, I think I think and it's a really fair point. Like you know, with you know the way that Britain went around the world colonizing countries, it's、mm. quite surprising that it didn't kind of try to use yeah those flavors, those spices, whatever it might、right. be in its own cooking. And I, I yeah、mm. maybe. I need to find a a, a a food expert 
to kind of explain why as a as a nation we've kind of embraced a lot of other cuisines realizing maybe that ours isn't the greatest so let's kind of celebrate other people's um yeah yeah but like as i mentioned like the british desserts are so good and even just like uh i was like so impressed by the clotted cream when i first tried it in the uk okay and all my korean friends were also very imp- impressed by it cuz like there's no such thing like clotted cream in korea and it's it goes so well with like scone and jam as well so like there's cream jam scone okay so important question here billy when you're creating uh, you know a scone mm. we have the scone with three ingredients scone jam and clotted cream mm. do you put on the scone do you put the jam and then the clotted cream or do you put the clotted cream and then the jam no oh, that's a controversial one it's a controversial one ah uh, i it's think i think it just looks so natural to like put clotted cream first as like foundation and then you put jam so i always put clotted cream first and jam but like some of my other friends do the other way so that's so <laughs> yeah yeah it's a big split so between confusing. devon and cornwall no mm. i always forget which is which but is in cornwall they put the cream first and then the jam oh and devon yeah. they put the jam and then the cream or it might be the other way around i've forgotten <laughs> But um, I'll, I'll put it. I'll put it here. I'll tell you which one it is. So it depends on the region, then. Yeah, it's a regional thing, oh, and there's wow. a you know wars have been fought over this. This is this is a big, this is big important mm. stuff um, in the southwest of England. Okay. Um, we've both been to Betty's Tea Room in Harrogate, haven't we? Oh yeah. Where they do Love a great it. afternoon tea. So good. Oh. Love it. Oh, that's it just My you know. Favorite. Even just like Harrogate itself is really really fancy yeah so it is it's one big afternoon tea frankly yeah so you get like the sandwiches on the bottom beautiful cut sandwiches oh my god yeah scones in the middle and then at the top you get the, the sort of the sweet treats so, the cake you can spend the whole day there basically. yeah mm. definitely worth a visit mm. um okay uh, billy i've got another question um mm-hmm. they say are there any tips for an english speaker learning korean okay so mm-hmm. going the other way Learning Korean. Yeah. Do you have any tips for English speakers learning Korean? Mm. So I think. Uh. So obviously, like Korean and English, are very different in many ways, grammatically and when it comes to pronunciation, like the way of communication, they are very different, almost the opposite. So it's really confusing to learn. Korean from the Westerners' perspective, I would say. So、uh, it could be very tricky. So I think、uh, what is important is, like I did, keep yourself entertained while learning the language, because、uh, that would be a great motivation, and that would be kind of like a fuel for learning the language. So while learning Korean language, there will be definitely moments when learning the language、uh, gets a bit boring, when it gets a bit deeper. But at the same time,、uh, don't forget to keep yourself entertained with like Korean cultural stuff. Like at the same time, you can still watch.、Uh, you can keep watching Korean TV shows or Korean films and listen to Korean songs at the same time, and. Keep enjoying learning the language at the same time, and what I also did when I was learning English was I just like, I think it's called like、uh, manifest manifesting these days. It's such a thing. So you, I kind of like imagined me live me living in the UK, and、uh, freely just like communicate with other British people. And thinking of that was really thrilling to me, being in Korea. So also like do this like manifest manifesting things as well. Like imagine you being in Korea and talking to Korean people. What would you say? And like how would you like to like communicate with other Korean friends? And that's also a great motivation as well. And also it's kind of like a simulation of using a foreign language. So that kind of also motivated me as well, kind of like dreaming it. Yeah, I love that.、Um, that idea of putting, immersing yourself as well、mm. from a distance.、Uh, you guys created 
uh, something called mukbang. Is that right? I yeah, don't know. If, mukbang. Um, so basically, you watch someone having a meal, right? They're eating right. a meal, and you're just mm-hmm. with them watching it on YouTube or whatever it is. Mm. And but I guess just that's kind of like putting yourself in the location, right? But th- right. virtually, as it were. Yeah, I think that would definitely work. And also, like mukbang, watching mukbang is also Korean people watching Premier League as well. Uh, okay, because <laughs> like, Korean people don't actually play football, but they just watch other people play football, right? And that also really helps uh, Korean people to you know immerse themselves into British culture as well. So you know that would really help as well, because like mukbang, the people there also speaking Korean casually as well. You can definitely like learn how they interact and how they communicate and the way of speaking Korean. You can definitely learn from that as well. So that's a great way, I would say. That's fantastic. Okay, let's do one more question because we've been flying flying through these. Right. Um, can a non-London or even non-British person? Have a Cockney accent. Oh, I, I've, I've got quite uh, interesting friends who are again football fans. So some of the like some of my Korean friends about are crazy about Tottenham FC, and some players <laughs> speak in the Cockney accent, really thick like London, London accent. So they just try to like mimic their accent as well. So some of my Korean friends end up speaking like Cockney accent, and also like the Liverpool FC fans, they just like keep watching the interview videos of like Liverpool football players, and because they speak with a Scouse accent, they just can't help absorbing their Scouse accent. So without even learning British English properly, my some of my Korean friends end up sounding like. Scousers, like Liverpool people, because they watch so many interview videos from Scousers. Yeah. So and you sort of pick up the intonation, possible. right? Like if you're listening mm-hmm. to someone over and over again, particularly yeah. Liverpool, it has a very specific intonation. Yeah. Um, it's kind of going up a lot. Um, mm-hmm. That's really interesting. Mm. And I've also seen some British people. They they interact with Busan people in Korea. Yeah. And Busan also has a very distinctive accent as well, like Liverpool. So because like some British people, <clears throat> they just like have been listening to the Busan accent for such a long time, they just like end up absorbing their Busan accent and have a bit of like a dialect style intonation in Korean. So I think it's definitely possible, yes, to for Korean people and other people to have different types of accents. Yeah, hundred percent. Even right at the beginning, when you you said the word British and you said British, and you used yeah, that glottal T, help. right, mm-hmm. which is a feature of many different accents, but yeah, of Cockney is, is one one example. Definitely. And it's you know you just that's just you just hearing it over and over again in that accent and you're absorbing it, right? That's right, kind of definitely a great example. Um, Billy, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, where can people find you? Right. So because my name is Korean Billy, if you just Google Korean Billy, you can find my work online. And I am available on YouTube. I'm running two different channels called Korean Billy, basically. And there is another one which focuses on language itself. And the channel name is Billionaire. And I am also active on Instagram. My handle is Korean Billy. Also on TikTok as well. My handle is Korean Billy. So check out my platforms. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Billy. I really appreciate your time. And thank guys, you so if, much. if you'd like to uh, send questions for next week's episode, then put them in the description below. Uh, sorry, put them in the comments below. Uh, but again, thank you, Billy. Have a wonderful day, and I'll chat to you soon. Thank you very much. Cheers, Bye. Mate.